Wacker West Monterey joins the public beaters one day later. I'm I Cave Dave and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you. And if you want the latest Apple leaks, news and rumours every weekday at 12 UTC, like the video, subscribe to the channel, ring my bell so that you don't miss a thing. And yes, yesterday I saw that the public beta for macOS Monterey had been released and responsibly installed it on my main production machine because that's how I roll. Um, so that kind of joins the uh, iOS 15 beta on my iPhone, on my iPhone 12 Pro Max, which is what we are recording this on, so fingers crossed, uh, on my iPad uh, Air 4, which is used as the monitor for this recording, and also I have uh, the Apple Watch with uh, watchOS 8 beta on there, so I've kind of gone all in. The only thing I haven't actually updated yet is the Apple TV in the lounge. Uh, I think I might do that over the weekend and let you know what goes on with that. I don't think there were any major changes with that. Not that were announced at WWDC at least. Apparently there are some changes. I think it's more around HomeKit so it might not affect me that much. But I think it's probably worth updating so that anything that I want to stream from the Mac will work with the TV probably more reliably than having them on different versions. So what do I think of... Monterey. Um, I think it's basically stable. It feels really stable. I've had absolutely zero issues so far. The installation was really smooth. Final Cut seems to work. Uh, everything that I've tried to do so far has worked perfectly well. Now, Universal Control, which is the you know the cool thing that they've added this year, um, d not in there yet. It's not. Uh, it's not a live feature. I don't believe it is in the developer betas either. So that's not necessarily so much of a surprise i am looking forward to trying that out as soon as it becomes a feature that we can play with that will be one of the things that i really want to see how well it works um and apparently uh, there's nothing particularly uh clever about the way that it works in terms of i thought when we watched wwdc that there was some kind of uh you know, U1 chip that was involved with knowing where the iPad was placed and so that you would be able to move across onto it. And uh, it turns out it's much easier than that. What they've done is when you jam your cursor across to one side of the screen, it assumes if there is an iPad nearby that you've put it next to it. So you could fool it and, and kind of th come off the wrong side of the screen onto it. It would be really inconvenient for you, but it's something that, you know, that's that's all it does is it works out well if you're trying to jam your cursor off the side and there's a nearby iPad then you're probably trying to get onto that iPad so uh, that's that's kind of fun the fact that that's how it works and it kind of intuitively works out where your stuff is rather than some kind of magical detection method other than that um I've got new wallpaper uh, because Monterey I thought we might as well go uh how it's supposed to look I think it looks kind of cool uh, it definitely fits in with the theme that we had from uh, Big Sur last year. So this will probably appear on a lot more thumbnails coming up soon. Um, not tested things like SharePlay yet. I've not tested basically many of the new features. I've not tried the live photo stuff yet. Um, but that's all over this weekend. We will be trying out a bunch of the new stuff and seeing what works and what doesn't and uh, and what's a bit janky but i don't think there's going to be any big issues from what i can see so far it seems to be like mega stable which i didn't think it was going to be because they delayed it but then it was only by a day so maybe they just didn't want to hit their servers too hard with everyone deciding to download uh the beaters at the same time next up apple looks like they might be switching to oled for ipads this is such a weird thing. I don't quite understand what is going on over at Apple. I know they've had the delays with uh, Mini LED. It looks like for the next generation of iPad Air that they're going to go to a 10.86 inch OLED panel. But it's not one of the flexible ones. It's one of the uh, the rigid ones. And maybe there's some way that they've... Uh, adjusted this so that we don't get the burn-in issues or maybe they've thought to themselves well actually iPads not necessarily just sitting on with the same stuff on the screen as much um, so perhaps they just have something in the pocket software wise that will help to avoid those burn-in issues perhaps uh, there is a way that they can measure when burn-in is about to happen and they can manage that but it just seems really weird we've heard this through supply chain we've heard this through a number of different sources now it's not just coming from one place uh, but it looks like apple may be looking to bring oled to the ipads just after moving to mini led 
Maybe they've realised that it's not ideal for some reason. Maybe the production challenges are just too much. Um, so we will see what happens with this. But it's it's very confusing to me because Apple seemed to not want to go to OLED uh, for a reason. It seemed to be mainly for the, the downsides of it, the difficulty with getting consistent brightness and all that sort of thing. But if they've nailed all this stuff, Happy to see them move to whatever they want to move to, but um, just seems strange. Now, we asked you uh, earlier this week for your setups, your Apple-related setups, and we have another one. This one is from Yuri Tech, and this is iPad-based, which is kind of cool. So he is using a sixth-generation iPad, which is in space grey with 32 gigabytes of storage, and it's the Wi-Fi model. He is planning to move over to the new iPad Air fourth generation soon, which is the one that I use, and I absolutely recommend it to people. Um, but he set it up as a desk setup with an iPad stand, a Magic Mouse and Magic Keyboard 2, a uh, wireless speaker, and uh, yeah, I, I, I do think that the iPad is still underrated as a production tool, as a thing for doing productivity, for doing typing, for doing your notes, all that sort of stuff. Like, if you're doing any kind of office stuff, it's just as good, pretty much, for me as a Mac, if you're concentrating on one job at a time. Now... It does work for multitasking. It's not as great at multitasking as a Mac, but it does the job. And for the pricing as well on these, so the sixth generation was the first one that was compatible with Apple Pencil outside of the outside of the Pro models. So I think that's a really good buy. It still works with the latest versions of i uh, of iPad OS. So I don't see why people wouldn't go for it. The fifth gen was the one that I was using when I started this channel um, less than a year ago, and uh, yeah, I was still playing Call of Duty on it, no problems at all, making videos for YouTube. So Yuri Tech, thank you very much for sharing that, and uh, go and check him out on Twitter and YouTube. We have a video question from Jai, he has uh, finally submitted it, so here we go. David, I wanted to ask you a question that, uh, are you running iOS 15 beta on your device, and if you are, what are your favorite features, what do you love about iOS 15, how it's been, and uh, have you ever faced any major issues till now on this firmware? Uh, yep, I do like this. Like, is th isn't this sticker though? Please. And just to be clear, he submitted this while I was filming yesterday's show, which is why it wasn't in yesterday's show. But then we kind of covered that I am using iOS 15 on my devices. Um, so yes, I am using it. Favorite features so far? I really love the new Safari. I really like the. Uh, I've, I've really quickly got used to having that address bar at the bottom. It feels more intuitive. Being able to swipe between tabs is very nice. Um, and I think the swipe at the bottom of the screen makes a lot of sense. One of the things that I really wish, because uh, I also have uh, iOS 15 beta on an iPhone 8, which is my work iPhone, um, I really wish that they would just allow you to use the same gestures on the home button based iPhones that you can use on the ones with uh, Face ID. I know it's got the home button there, but still just let me swipe up and let me do all that stuff on the screen. Um, I don't feel like we need to continue to use the home button uh, primarily, even though we have it there. I don't feel like there's any real reason that they couldn't add this alongside the home button so that people can get used to the new style of gesture control. Uh, I think that would be really good. And I also think it would be really good if the control center moved to the top right, like it is now, and keep notifications on top left, just like on a Face ID model, because I think that would be uh, something that they should do. Um, but yeah, favorite iOS 15 features so far. That one, Maps, looks really cool. Um, on the iPhone, I couldn't work out how to get into 3D mode, but I can do it on the Mac. Um, might have just, might be missing where they've put the button for that now. Um, but other than that, yeah, love it. Really cool. Johnny Wade asks, IK answers, is Tim Cook a goody CEO? I'm gonna say you mean good here, and I think he's a great CEO. We've discussed this uh, on the channel Recently, I think he's a better CEO than Steve was. Steve would have been a great chief creative officer for a company like Apple, um, and he would have done a better job in that role, I think, with someone else looking after the CEO duties as long as they were supporting what he was doing. So where the problems came with Steve in the past was that he got a new CEO in who didn't believe in his vision for the products, um, and that's why he left Apple uh, and went over to next and pixar and then ended up coming back anyway whereas tim uh, very much seems to give the creative freedom to his creative team while running the logistics side and being sort of more of a coo 
as well as the CEO and uh, and and looking after the the logistics of making sure that they've got all the parts they need, and um, but also kind of focusing on philanthropy and making sure that Apple is a company with purpose and not just a company that makes stuff. But yeah, it would be difficult to say that he's not a good CEO when Apple is the most valuable company on the planet. Michael Moy asks, does vintage mean no more hardware repairs? It would be a pain if Apple didn't replace bulging batteries anymore. So this is in reference to the uh, the news that the 2015 uh, MacBook, the 12 inch model, has now been made vintage by Apple. Um, vintage, I believe, means no more software updates, pretty much. Um, and it just kind of means that uh, it's not really a supported product anymore. It's not one that you can kind of easily get support from Apple Care and uh, Apple uh, online support. However, that being said, they've always been really good with me, even with like super old stuff like last year trying to get support for a, twin, uh, a 2007 macbook black macbook that i was trying to install uh lion on because i i was missing an operating system they were very very helpful with all of that too so um it kind of doesn't mean a lot the vintage part but uh vintage is basically products that stopped being sold between five and seven years ago and over seven years ago they're called obsolete now once they're obsolete that means that uh, apple doesn't necessarily have the parts available to repair them so for a for a five year old product that is vintage they will still repair it but it will be out of warranty but uh, but with the obsolete ones you've got less chance of being able to find those parts through apple so hopefully that makes sense there's really not a huge amount going on right now, guys. I'm trying my best to fill these shows. Um, but please ask any questions that you've got. Hashtag iCaveAnswers in the comments section. Or ask me a video question via Twitter. Or you can send me your setups via david at sangwells.co.uk. Or in the Twitter DMs if you want to do it that way. And I would love to feature some more of your stuff in upcoming shows. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.